the top secret Wave Rover time machine is activated by this little button. It worked! So now, I'm building a new boat. Smaller, lighter, but more suited for a solo circumnavigation. The Wave Rover 650. Well, hello Rovers. I've activated Prince Edward Island's only working time machine for three reasons. Number one, I'd like to thank everybody in Rover Navy who gave me their input on the placement of the galley. So I've decided to place the galley on the port side. So why on the port side? Well, I can be on a starboard tack, have the right away, slip below, make a cup of tea, get back up on deck and everything will be fine. So that was the major reason because really there didn't really seem to be any compelling reason why it would be on one side or the other, but the right of way uh, and putting the port side on the lower side, that made sense. So I'll be putting on a port side, which is opposite to Wave Rover 1. Now, the second reason I've activated the time machine is to just to show you where we are because we are at least a couple of months ahead of the regular videos and that's why I'm activating the time machine so you can see where we are and the progress that we've made and I'll give you a boat tour in a minute and the third reason is there is yet another big announcement to make concerning a big change in the look and superstructure of this project, the Wave Rover 650. And I'll get into that in a minute. But let's now grab a boat tour. So starting up here on the port side, this is where the galley will be. And nothing has happened really from this bulkhead and of course the adjacent one over here. Uh, nothing has really happened from that point forward since the last video. But boy, a lot of stuff has happened aft of those two bulkheads so i mean the thing that really stands out is probably the deck beams they're all in they're fared everything looks pretty good and we're very close to decking over uh, the boat is a bit of a mess right now you can see that and there's more mess coming later today so uh but i just wanted to bring you this boat tour while i can um, another big change is the bunk is in and the bunk isn't just a bunk, it is in fact a series of compartments, five compartments. And right here I've removed the lid. Now of course these lids are going to have closures on them just like I had in Wave Rover 1. But that'll be more in the finishing stage later on. But right here you can see inside, well, it's been fiberglassed, uh, not completely, but mostly. And also it has two coats of S1 epoxy and because of that I, I'm considering this space finished you know it, it's a time consideration if you have more time paint it as well but for me I'm considering this finished and also back aft here we're just going to duck under what would be the cockpit area and the port and starboard quarters are finished and they've been They've received two coats of S1 inside. Um, the, this is a structural piece. There's a beam running across. There's an inspection hatch that will be going here and, of course, uh, here as well. I've decided that I'm just going to leave these open so that I can, well, let's see which one is brighter, maybe this one, so that I can get inside these holes and just take a really good look and make sure we don't have any condensation. So I'll be doing that at first. I can always fill these with pop bottles, empty pop bottles later for buoyancy. And this, the way I like it, it uh, to do that would be put the pop bottles in some sort of net bag so that uh, if we do take a hole, everything will, you know, won't go rushing out the hole. But uh, the, the, the other thing we should be well aware of is down here, you can see a horizontal line just at the back here. Uh, that actually is the water line. So, I mean, we are really well above the water line with these crash bulkheads. 
Now, the area that I'm actually in right now is a fair size area. And the beam right here that we're looking at, right here, this marks what would be the aft end of the hatch to enter Wave Rover 650. And there will be some structure that'll come out. I haven't decided fully on that yet and then come down and this whole area in here where I still have to build the skeg and some floors uh, this is where I will store the dinghy and I made a decision on the dinghy so the dinghy I am going with a 2.3 meter which is 7 foot 6 inch dinghy inflatable dinghy um, they're not too expensive on account of their PVC now I know Hypalon is a superior product for a dinghy, but Hypalon, as it turns out, doesn't fold up as small as PVC. It's certainly a lot more expensive than PVC, and really, I, I, I don't need that because the, the, the dinghy's going to spend the majority of its time inside this space, and it'll just be taken out, inflated, and then I'll use it to go ashore to get water and supplies, and then we get back on our trip. I mean, it's not as though a PVC dinghy is going to uh, be destroyed in a year or two. The manufacturer tells me it's uh, they're quite a bit tougher than that, and there's some sort of spray I can put on it that will give it a much longer life and UV resistance. The uh, dinghy has an air floor. I had a choice on going with an air floor or with, uh, with uh, an aluminum floor, and it uh, turns out that the air floor, of course, is lighter, but the but it folds up smaller. the The aluminum floor is extra length that I have to take care of. So you know, it's a big space, but there are other things happening in this space. So I just wanted to make sure everything was going to work out for me. So that's it on the dinghy. I, I can't really show it to you because it's ordered, and it'll be another three months before it arrives. So in the next couple of days, I'll start decking over this area. And I'll be doing that with the same ply that the hull is made out of, 3 8 marine ply, Maranti 1088, I think is the standard. And, uh, well, I, I'm not exactly sure how that'll go. You know, I'll start, there's two different pieces. They'll be running athwart ships. I'll start with the small one and get a feeling for how it's going, and then this bigger one. Um, the, on, this, on the note of this bigger one, Right here, this is where the cabin starts. So the hatch starts right here. The aft end of the hatch comes forward. And then the cabin, the aft end of the cabin starts right here. So the aft end of the cabin has changed. It has changed its shape. And I've been in consultations with a, with a few of the builders that are building the 650 and uh, with Andy, the architect, and we're all convinced that it's a pretty good move. So I'm, I'm going to flash up a picture, an artist's conception of, of what it looks like. Now, what's happening is the big curve that you're seeing from one side to the other is actually going to be not only simpler to build, it's also going to be a stronger build than those 90 degree angles that the doghouse initially had. The height of this camber is the same height as what the doghouse would be but um, you know I'll have significantly more room off to the port and starboard sides but structurally it's going to be I think a lot stronger because you're pre-stressing that ply and when you pre-stress anything you're building in a certain amount of strength and that's certainly what's going to be happening with that you know rather deep curve now you might have noticed in the artist's conception of the new cabin top that the deck boxes are gone. So the deck boxes I wasn't really, really happy about. You know, it was a it was a bit of a compromise. And the compromise stemmed from the fact that after you step out of the hatch, so I'm back here at the beginning at the aft end of the hatch, after I step out of here, I'm on a flat surface. So I need some sort of protection to keep my foot from sliding over the rail. And what Andy and I uh, talked about and decided would be a better solution 
will be little tow rails uh, that will go along the deck at strategic points. Of course, there will be some on the outboard edge to keep, you know, from sliding over the edge. But near the uh, hatch, when you step out, I want to have some sort of tow rail either uh, port, port and starboard of the hatch in order to let you have pretty good footing, maybe a triangular piece of wood bolted to the deck, and then you can get back aft to the seat or adjust the Mark III. Although I also have some um, ideas on making the Mark III so that I'll be able to control it from inside the cabin. Very similar to what Ming Ming did, or I believe what Ming Ming did on on uh, one of his voyages. So, um, yeah, we, we've got a few changes, but I, I want you to understand that this is a prototype. And as a prototype, you know, and this is the first one, hull number one, as a prototype and hull number one, uh, it's my prerogative to make changes. You know, they're not willy-nilly changes. Uh, I do think about these things pretty deeply. I bounce it off the builders group. I bounce it off Andy, the architect, and a few of my other close friends, and uh, then come to these decisions from what I'm hoping is an informed point of view. But after removing the cockpit well, uh, and you know, and in changing the, the design to a flat deck here and of course now the cabin uh, top just having a great big camber uh, those are that's it that's it for the big changes there's no need to change anything else and at the end of the day Andy's original plan is an excellent plan it just I just wanted to customize a few items for myself and structurally um, it hasn't really changed a lot of the plan. If anything, I think these little changes have strengthened the uh, design, but it was already a very, very strong design to start with. Now, in the last, um, I think when I put the keel beams down, there was a question about limber holes. And limber holes are little holes that allow water to drain. Well, in our design, it's actually three watertight compartments. So I don't really want limber holes because that'll just defeat the whole idea behind a watertight compartment. And really, these uh, this bunk area right here with its five compartments, those five compartments are all well above the water line and each of them should contain any damage. You know, you might get damage over one or two, but certainly not over all of them. That would be, uh, that would be an abandoned ship situation, I think. But there are three watertight compartments. There'll be one back aft here, just, uh, just forward of the hatch. And in forward of that watertight bulkhead, there will be a wet area in the floor. This will be our bilge area. So this will have limber holes in it so that the water can collect at the lowest point, which will be right up here near where this first beam is. And then I'll have a, uh, I'll have a bilge pump that will be able to pump it out. Now, it, it won't be very deep because of the dimensions of the boat, but I do plan on having a pretty dry boat for the most part. But if water does come in, it, it will be contained pretty much below the hatch because there, there really are no other real openings. There's going to be some vents, but no real openings for water to come in. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I've eliminated lim limber holes for the most part, other than what I consider the wet area in the bilge. Well, Rovers, that concludes our uh, time machine boat tour. Um, I hope uh, you found it interesting, and I'd like to get your input on what you think about the new cabin top design. And like I said, that's, that's probably the last major change. Um, very shortly, in the next few weeks, I'll be going on a bit of a field trip. I have someone who's going to be helping me. He's actually a professor at University of Prince Edward Island who has taken an interest in our project and has come up with a really slick... Uh, keel design. It's still bilge keels, of course, but just a different way of attaching them. And we're going to head up to the university, use the water jet 
cutter, cut the steel, and then weld up these keels. I assure you, that's going to be very interesting. And that's a lot of stuff uh, I'll be seeing for the first time. And I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Now, there is one thing other I would like to get your input on. So ventilation in this boat. So as you know from the drawings or the artist conception, we have two dorade vents that are up near just just after the mast and that'll that'll get nice uh, reasonably dry air into the boat. And then on the aft end of the cabin, which is right here, I would like to have some sort of through hull uh, venting. Uh, on one side or both sides and uh, I'm not sure about that I've never used it before so if anybody has uh, any ideas on that type of venting you know it has to be weatherproof of course you have to be able to screw them sh uh, shut so that they're they're absolutely weather tight um, if you have uh, experience with that or you've used some in the past and uh, you know it's probably a manufacturer's brand uh, please share it with me and let me know what your thoughts are on it and the final piece of housekeeping concerns the benefactor's bulkhead. So uh, I've decided to limit participation in the benefactor's bulkhead to 100 names, no more than that, because I want those people who've contributed to the benefactor's bulkhead to feel special. It's not just an endless stream of names. There is going to be just 100. I, currently, we're just a little over 60, so there's no panic if you, if you would like to get your name on. There's still plenty of time. And as we approach that 100, I'll be making announcements, telling or reminding everyone that we'll be terminating it at 100. Now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Now, at this point, I'd like to welcome a new name to our benefactor's bulkhead, Robert Shun. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now, these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, Mr. Speckles and I would like to take a moment to thank all the Wave Rover patrons whose pledges of support help power the Wave Rover project. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now, another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>